Bigman is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, Ron Stevens. Ron, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, fellas. How are we doing today? We're doing well. Hungry, hungry, Ron. You came in saying, where's the food? I, I had the plan. I had the plan. But you, didn't, you did not uh, follow through on it or disclose it to us. I will agree with Rob that our, uh, our listeners may not want to listen to us chew food <laughs> while we're talking. I agree with that. There is some cherry delight left over from yesterday. Matt Miller's mother made it, and, and uh, Matt brought it in yesterday. It's in the fridge. Feel free to help yourself on the way out. It's pretty phenomenal. Cherry delight. Yeah, cherry delight. Cherry delight. It's got uh, graham cracker crust, that cherries. Is a, that is a delight. And uh, there's like a, a whipped cream uh, topping mixed in there too, with some mixed with something else, and it's yeah, it, it goes. Uh, it, it, it'll ring a bell. Well, the fellas, bell. some sometime I'll have to tell you a story about cherries jubilee. Oh yeah, cherries jubilee. I have uh, time there, now there, if you'd like to. There tell was me. major confusion at a. Um, I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Uh, there was uh, major confusion at a at a family funeral um, a few years back, and um, I was the taker uh, of, of notes of of all the gifts that were brought uh, in honor of the person that had passed. Mm-hmm. And as I was writing things down, they were coming in rapidly because this was a very popular person. Um, and I was working with another person who was telling me who brought what and, and, and all that. And in my notes, um, there was a lady named Cherry Jubilee, and she brought two jet skis. And um, I thought that was the, about the weirdest thing I'd ever heard of. Oh, but there were there two were, jet skis. That's that's what the, that's what I was that's was in, gift. that was the gift that I put in the notes. So that's that's okay. it's an expensive so, gift. So I thought the same thing, um, but the, there were trees, there were plants, there were letters, there were poems, there were pictures. It was coming in rapidly. Those were the, those were my notes. Soon it was over. Um, I gave the entire list to the uh, to the family, and I said, "Wow, that your your loved one was really missed." There were all kind of gifts in there, and I said, "I don't know who Cherry Jubilee is, but two jet skis to a, <laughs> as as a gift for a funeral were a little bit. I hadn't heard of that before. Although there, there was a large lake that lived that was nearby, so I didn't know. And they w- had been crying. It was a very emotional day." Um, and they all looked at each other and smiled, and you said, and they said, "Do you mean Mrs. Tajetsky <laughs> <laughs> brought Cherry Jubilee?" <laughs> brought Cherry Jubilee, <laughs> and I said, "That makes a lot more sense to me." <laughs> so I, um, so yes. they don't let you take notes at the school board I, meeting, then, do they? Well, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, and they shouldn't if they, if they do. I'm just saying, and. Um, yeah. Uh, it it um, never surprises me. Never surprises me. It would be interesting, though, if somebody passed. You just here's a couple of jet skis. Go have some fun. It'll make you forget your problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, for a moment, uh, there was a uh, there was a little bit of levity. So yeah. Uh, yeah. well, you brought some smiles. Yeah. I would like to think that that helped. Yeah, I have uh, a cherry pie story. Should I tell you? My, or do we want to go to business now? I don't think I could stop you if I wanted to. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm giving you the opportunity. Well, how long is the story? Well, I'll try to make it short. But you know, my short stories they tend to get long and long. Let's go to let's go to business. I love to. Fair enough. Uh, Ron, let's talk about uh, bus drivers and your school bus routes. Uh, I've received texts about more bus routes being canceled, which means, unfortunately, for some kids that they can't go to school that day. How prevalent is this this year? Well, I want to I want to preface: they can go to school that day. There's just not transportation. Right. Yes. Transportation is not provided uh, by right. the school on that day because of the emergency situation with not having drivers um, out there. So, how prevalent is it uh, on a regular basis? We have uh, uh, runs that are uh, are unable to be covered, and uh, you know some days are. are more prevalent than others. Excuse me, let's quantify it. How yes. many runs do you have, Ron? Oh, my, I knew you were going to ask me that, and yeah. I'm drawing a blank on that. We have, um, uh, I, I would, I hesitate to put a number okay. on that. But uh, then, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but then, uh, but there are hundreds. There are, there are hundreds. multiple okay. hundreds. And you say uh, uh, on certain days there's several not run. Are we talking about five to ten, or are we talking about 50 to 60, or what? A, a handful. 
a handful. Five, five or six is a, is is a is a lot. Okay. Um, you know, and we we think that's a lot. We we agree. We agree with the parents who are frustrated. We're frustrated. Um, you know, it's a it's a very difficult situation, and um, you know, I have to give it to our. Uh, our transportation department, we have a number of drivers that volunteer to run extra runs. Um, you know, they, they put in extra time. They, they find ways to get these kids home, uh, that they're, they're not their regular stops. So it's, it's, it's challenging all around. Um, I think things are getting a little bit better. Uh, I don't know that how, how soon we'll be able to come out of the woods with that. I know that it's an issue across the country, a yeah. uh, shortage of drivers. But I was going to say, and this, the problem is just that shortage of drivers. It's not the equipment. It's not Correct. the hours. It's just shortage of drivers. Correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're we're like other school districts, like I said, across the country. We're, we're short at teachers and, and cooks and custodians. But it's extremely noticeable when it's a driver who has to come and their job is to actually – pick up the students first thing in the morning. Um, you know, so that stands out. And I know that our transportation department takes, takes calls from frustrated uh, people on a daily basis. We, we help deal with that. Um, all I can say to our community is that we, we are filling runs. There are many, many more runs without drivers uh, that we're covering that than the runs that we're not able to cover. The difficulty comes. Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> okay, yeah. so there may be ten or fifteen runs without a driver, but a majority of those runs we're able to cover with other drivers working extra. Okay. But there are some runs uh, that it's just it's not feasible for us to be able to get. Uh, we don't have the drivers available. That the neighbor the driver of a route close by is not able to take that route. Maybe they're already working on one. Um, do you do you have uh, software that tries to consolidate the routes that can't be covered? So if you have the capacity on the bus, you just expand the route. We we do, we do. Um, our um, our software helped to schedule all the runs to begin with, so that you know it would soften the blow on on much of this. But there's only so much that you can do. Um, on the morning of sure. school, like if it, yes. if if a driver, I mean, think of it this way: we do have uh, we do have a couple hundred drivers out there, um, and just like a place of employ, a place of regular employment, there's sick leave. There's days when people are not uh, don't feel well mm -hmm. and just can't can't come to work, and it it will hit them in the morning. And if that happens, um, it's a scramble to try to cover that run because there's not a uh, there's not um, a list of substitutes available. All of our drivers that we have that are trained, for the most part, are out there on runs. Ron, um, let me see so, if I can get better yeah. understand the problem. Let's say everybody is driving. Nobody is taking off the day. Do we have enough drivers to cover all the routes if everybody is there? Yes. Okay, so it's only when someone is ill or Correct. some other event comes up. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that, you know, we we will. Um, it's it's there's a natural attrition, just mm -hmm. like any other sure. job. There there are times when drivers will leave for other opportunities, and we're hiring along the way. We're just not able to get ahead of the curve, and hire more, um, so that we have a an abundance of of substitute drivers. We have some that are retired that are are able to be there. We have some substitutes that can help in specific instances. But we're really, really short on day-to-day -day substitutes. Rob mentioned software a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, does the software extend to the drivers themselves to say you stop here for a child or stop there for a child? And my question is, if someone is not a regular driver, how do they know how to run the route? Well, <laughs> that's, that is a challenge. That is a challenge. And, and I will tell you, it is a, a daily challenge for all of our drivers. Um, the, um, the software is more of a scheduling software, um, but it, it does help provide um, addresses. I would ask that you talk to our uh, executive director of transportation to, to give you a little bit more detail about 
that process um, so that we can get it accurate. But, um, you know, I, I just want to give a shout out to all the drivers that are, that are working double time to, to make sure that the, the students do get there. It is a challenge to get students to, uh, to school. Um, and we're working to, to try to remedy that. Yeah, we, we had Derek Kiesecker on uh, beginning of the school year or so mm-hmm. to talk about uh, transportation. I think, is Eric, I think he may be on tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, so we'll, we'll try to get him on again. But uh, yeah. he made it clear beginning of the year that we, we need employees. We, we need do. people who will drive buses. I'll take this opportunity to plug the, uh, the uh, job fair that we're having at our transportation department, 88 Harla, Harlan Run, mm-hmm. um, next Saturday, the 28th. Between 10 and 12, come on out, get behind the wheel of a bus. Take it for a spin. Fill out the paperwork, take it for a spin. What you need See to have, Ron, is, is bus races. you gotta make, you got to make it look like it's a, you know, it's a sexy thing to do. <laughs> right? Bus drag races, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Run out to yes. fairgrounds, have a, have, have a bus smash-up derby, you know. And, uh, Rob. Um, marketing. It's all marketing. See, we Rob, should have brought food in, Ron. <laughs> we should have brought food in. We're, we we're hungry. We're talking about discussion. crazy. Rob's now talking about sexy bus races with school buses. <laughs> so. you, got, you got to make the, uh, I don't make know. the profession I don't know, more Rob. attractive to I don't people. Know. Right? I don't know. Just throwing it out there. I'll, I'll, I'll pitch it to Elaine and see where it goes from there. Oh, my hands. You know, we, got, we have Board of Education members who listen to the program. Maybe I'll work them over a little bit, too. <laughs> and if you do that, I'd be anxious to see who's the lady that's waving the flag. Is she properly attired like you do? Get that checkered old, flag. Uh, I, the wrestling I, matches and the like? So. I, I would I would hope that it's uh, one of our mechanics. <laughs> <That's> full, <right. laughs> full, full, full gear. <laughs> jumpsuit and everything. With a grease rag. That's, yeah. that's the way we need to do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> how is the absenteeism rate as we continue into the school year, Ron? Is it improving, or are you uh, getting more kids out sick at this time? Um, our absenteeism rate is, you know, uh, again, that's that's a daily um, attendance rate that we that we check in with, and Mr. Van Meter and I have not spoken this week about what our progress is, so my information would be dated. Um, but um, checking our chronic absenteeism, our regular absent uh, absence rates, we appear to be going in the right direction. Uh, small steps are better than no steps. Um, even with the challenges of, of transportation and, um, you know, things, things that are taking place, um, I, I think that we're going in the right direction. How about the SROs, safety reserve officers? Their attendance? No, no. Do you have enough in place now? Or- okay. We, we have uh, um, a contracts agreements with the city and the county to have SROs at our four in our four districts one stationed at every high school uh and we are we're continuing with that uh, they do a great job um you know just this weekend we worked with um the city uh Martinsburg police department on a situation with a with a student and it was um you know, great cooperation they did a fantastic job uh and the relationships that are built during the day with the administrative team really helped that so uh, no, I think I think that our our SROs, our you know the officers that are in our schools, both city and county officers, are doing a great job. Is it still your preference to have a a, a school directed private force as opposed to a sheriff's department directed force? Well, um, it, you know, it, I think it's going to have to be a choice. You know, as as we look at. Um, where we want to go down the road, uh, I, I don't. I mean, realistically, we can say that we want all of these positions, but I'm not sure we can fill them. Sure, we we need to create positions and um, have strategies that we can actually do. Uh, I don't think it's realistic to say that we're going to have an officer in 32 schools. I just don't know that we're going to be. We're having problems, you know, city, county, state level getting officers, you know, on the road the way it is mm-hmm. to find 32 extra in um, in Berkeley County, not to mention the other 54 counties would be, uh, that would be a monumental task. But the target, is, I've been told, <clears throat> is seven. Are you, do you think you'll be able to achieve seven? We are looking at, our, keep maintaining the four that yeah. we already yeah. have uh, and then developing a relationship with um, 
experienced former officers, um, retired or otherwise, to pull together um, a, a team to work with our SROs uh, at, at our remaining secondary schools. So the total would be 10. Um, but those would be people that the school system would hire and they would be treated as employees of the school system, not the sheriff's department. That's correct? the goal. That's the goal. Um, you know, right now, we, we have an increasing need to, to uh, utilize these employees on weekends at, at, at night events and summer um, activities over holidays. And uh, it's, it's, it's difficult for our, our police departments to free people up to be able to do all that. Because the school day can go from 7.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. It, it can go later than that. Yeah. You know, it can go later than that if you've got a, you know, we, we, we deal with uh, intruders in the middle of the night. We deal with, um, you know, things that happen on, like I said, on weekends, on holidays. We have summer school. Uh, there are a variety of things that um, make it a challenge. Makes Ron, another aspect of safety that we've been talking about in the past is a hardening of the schools. And I realize that differs from school to school to school. Uh, do, you, do you think there's been some, some progress made on the hardening of the schools? I, I think so. And I think that there was, um, you know, any time that there is um, vulnerability that is shown um, – whether it's after school shooting or or a break in or uh, whatever whatever the rationale is, uh, we we tend to take a closer look, and I think those are good good times for us to be able to to focus on what needs to be done. But you said uh, after an event, uh, right. I would think it'd be more important before the event. What, what I'm mean, saying what I'm saying is across the country, it is it is a pattern for you know after 9/11 things tightened up yeah. after um, events in um, Miami or Uvalde, um, school security tightened up, um, you know, taking those to build on what we're already doing, um, to, to focus us, I, I think is, is, um, you know, that we're in that window of time still. And I know that, <clears throat> you know, we've had law enforcement that have, have walked with, um, I can't think of the gentleman's last name. I'm sorry, Kevin. I can't think of your last name from the governor's task force uh, that works with uh, school safety. But we're working in conjunction with the sheriff and the chief uh, here to do walkthroughs. Okay. Uh, and we're designing safer school entrances and, and addressing windows that, that have been brought to our attention and doors. Uh, yeah, there will be a long, there be a long mm -hmm. litness, a long list, I'm sure. Have you, have you talked to our legislators about specific needs, specific dollar needs? We have had conversation with legislators. Um, it's never enough. What would, you know, I, we don't have time to talk about this every day with every legislator. We, it, that's, probably what it would it would take to keep things at everybody's forefront we do have a um a work session scheduled soon to be able to speak with and address concerns with our local legislators mm -hmm. and uh, that i'm certain will be one of our topics and be specific needs mm -hmm. yeah do you have an update on the hedgesville football field ron um well first of all um you know, kudos to the kids at Hedgesville, the coaching staff, and and everyone there for for being resilient enough and flexible enough to be able to put together a schedule, you know, off site um, with the the prognosis of the field. <clears throat> excuse me, the prognosis of the field l led us to the decision that we were not going to be able to continue play on that field this year, um, with the fact that that field is scheduled to be replaced with a with a turf field for for Hedgesville High School there's there are decisions that are that are in the process of being made uh, it appears as though our initial um, study done by a geotech service that you know the field didn't have any major stabilization problems um, that the 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 uh, weaknesses in the field this fall came as a direct result of the uh, leaks in the system, the irrigation you know, and sprinkler system, the drainage system that were there. It actually did not 
uh, come from movement underneath of the ground that caused the sinkholes. So these were accident caused sinkholes, not natural, mm-hmm. if that makes sense, uh, which is going to allow, uh, which would allow um, construction and things to move forward for uh, future use of that field. Does a turf just not w- w- when we continue to use it, it would it would be uh, most likely um, the with an artificial surface, the turf. What's the time frame on that? Well, the goal is um, to to be playing on that field next year. Is that the same at Musselman High School? It is. Uh, are those uh, still about a million dollars a piece? <laughs> the the turf itself. Yeah. Yes. The projects to to you know to stabilize everything, to take care of the drainage, to you know, Musselman, you've got to look. There's some things that have to happen with the track that is around it. Right. Um, you know, it those those will be significantly more. For the projects, but the turf itself, yes. And those still have about a ten to twelve year lifespan projection, or have they gotten better? Um, no, it's still about ten to twelve. Um, you know, on a cycle, if you're going to continue that for for long term, um, it just depends on the use of the field, the number of activities, how many different groups are on the field utilizing mm-hmm. it, how it's how it's treated, how it's combed or or uh, raked between uses. Uh, all of that has to do with the lifespan. And do you have uh, some superintendent shout-outs you want to do? Oh, I've got a ton. I've got a ton. I've got, I've got a microphone. All right. I'm glad. Um, so this week is uh, uh, Fire Prevention Week, and the uh, the House on Wheels is going to be out among the schools. The, ki- the kids and uh, the staff really appreciate the cooperation with that. And um, it is no, uh, it's no accident that they're going to be focusing on uh, fires and accidents in the kitchen. And this coming on the heels of last week's um, Child Nutrition Week. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like the fire department saw me in the kitchens (laughs) serving. So they wanted to make sure everybody had a safe way. They they were like, hey, wait, we've got to address this. So I think that was probably what happened there. So your serving is on par with your note-taking, is what you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I did have to ice down my shoulder after scooping uh, a... you know, uh, three lunch shifts at Martinsburg High School scooping uh, beans and fruit. So it, it did get stiff. Heavy, heavy labor, baby. It was very difficult. I also want to give a shout out to Marlowe Elementary School for being a uh, an Apple Distinguished School Technology uh, area. Some of our uh, schools, if you rode by on the outside and you looked at buildings that are going to be over uh, uh, over 100 years old, mm-hmm. um, but on the inside, there are very good things that are taking place. Um, don't forget about School Bus Safety Week. I, I mentioned that to you before. And some dates to remember. Um, the uh, 19th of this week is a, a two-hour delay. Uh, that is <clears throat> going to be a um, two-hour delay for students. And on the 27th, 23rd to the 27th, is Red Ribbon Week, which is um, Say No to Drugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a number of other activities uh, constantly going on. I uh, would um, ask everyone to contact the schools, look at the uh, look at their websites, and participate in the activities and show support for the students that are out there. Ron, good to see you again. It's very good to see you. Let's work breakfast in next time. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sausage, some some peppers, some eggs. Getting them in there. We're we're good. <laughs> will Will Hornby provide? Will, nope. He'll not. <laughs> no. That's on us. <laughs> Ron Stevens, Superintendent of Schools in Berkeley County. Appreciate that. Elaine Bobo helping to set that up. Thank you, Elaine. This-